This video was designed to acquaint Berkshire Brothers convenience store employees with safety procedures, guidelines, and rules that must be followed in order to maintain a safe and productive workplace. Depending on the position for which you were hired, additional safety training may be required. If you have any questions about the material presented in this video, be sure to ask your supervisor or store manager before beginning work. Nothing is more important than your safety, as well as the safety of every employee and customer. Our first topic is emergency evacuation procedures. If an emergency were to occur that would require the store to be evacuated, employees must be able to respond quickly and orderly to prevent personal injury and unnecessary disruption to our operation. Any employee that detects fire, smoke, or any other emergency should respond by immediately notifying the manager in charge. The manager in charge will be responsible for making the decision whether or not to evacuate the building and will notify employees and customers of the situation. Upon notification to evacuate the building, stop what you are doing and calmly walk to the nearest exit. Then proceed to the designated assembly area and wait for further instructions. Managers and shift leaders should assist customers to emergency exits and conduct a search of all restrooms, offices, coolers, and storage closets to assure all persons are evacuated and then proceed to the assembly area. No employee should leave the assembly area or re-enter the building until instructed to do so by a member of management. If you do not know the location of the emergency exits or the designated assembly area, be sure to ask your supervisor or store manager at the conclusion of this video. Hazard Communication and Chemical Safety A safety data sheet book is available at each location. The book contains a chemical inventory list of every chemical approved for use along with a corresponding safety data sheet. The safety data sheet contains important information about the chemical including health and safety information, chemical characteristics, and precautions for safe handling. Any employee may look up the safety data sheet for any approved chemical at any time. A copy of the written hazard communication plan is also kept in front of the safety data sheet book and may also be viewed at any time. Now let's look at specific requirements pertaining to chemical safety. All chemicals are to be stored in their original or approved container with a manufacturer label attached. Always read manufacturer labels and observe safety precautions which apply to handling, storage, and usage. Containers with missing, faded, or torn labels should be discarded and replaced with a new container. Never mix chemicals unless labels specifically instruct. Most cleaners approved for use arrive at the store in concentrated form and must be transferred or dispensed directly into spray bottles, buckets, or sinks. It is very important that these concentrated cleaners are properly diluted and all safety precautions are followed. Never transfer or dispense a chemical to an unmarked container or to a container labeled for a different chemical. Inform your supervisor if appropriate spray bottles are not available so additional bottles can be ordered. Working in a convenience store requires a certain amount of lifting, good posture, good physical condition, proper body mechanics, and performing proper lifting techniques all contribute to maintaining a healthy back. By developing proper lifting habits, you can help protect yourself against unnecessary injuries and back-related medical problems. Pay attention as we demonstrate proper lifting techniques. Stand as close as you can to the load with your feet spread apart about shoulder width. Squat down, bending at your knees, not your waist. Keep your back straight. Get a good grip with both hands before beginning the lift. Begin slowly lifting with your legs, not your back. Keep the load close to your body to reduce the force on your back. If you must turn while carrying the load, turn using your feet, not your torso. It is equally important that the load is set down correctly. The same procedures should be followed in reverse order when setting down the load. Lastly, always ask for help if an item is too heavy or bulky to safely lift alone and never attempt to lift anything you do not feel comfortable lifting. Our next topic is ladder safety. 
before using a ladder, always inspect it to make sure it is safe to use. Inspect the rubber feet, spreaders, and steps for damage or defects. If no damage is observed, then check to make sure the ladder is not wobbly. If a ladder does not pass inspection or appears unsafe in any way, report it to your supervisor and do not use until it has been properly repaired or replaced. If dirt, oil, or food scraps are present on the steps, be sure to clean before using. Make sure the legs rest on a level surface and are stable before climbing the ladder. Never turn to the side or face backwards. Do not overextend. Get down and move the ladder if you cannot easily reach the task at hand. If you must use a ladder near the door, have another employee stand guard to prevent someone from opening the door and hitting the ladder. Step stool safety is very similar to ladder safety. Before using the step stool, always inspect it for damage and make sure it is not wobbly. If your step stool does not pass inspection or appears unsafe in any manner, report it to your supervisor. The step stool should be discarded and a replacement ordered. If dirt, oil, or food scraps are present on the steps, be sure to clean before using. Make sure the legs rest on a level surface and the stool is stable. Always use a step stool that is tall enough for the job and avoid overreaching. If necessary, get down and move the stool closer to the item you are trying to reach. Finally, do not stand on milk crates or other items not designed to be used as step stools. In a convenience store, floors must be kept clean, dry, and free of clutter to help prevent slips, trips, and falls. Since no one person can be everywhere at all times, it is every employee's responsibility to keep an eye out for slip and trip hazards on the floor. To begin with, items that do not belong on the floor, such as trash, food scraps, or loose ice, should be immediately cleaned up. It is never okay to leave these types of items on the floor after they have been discovered. If a liquid spill is observed or reported on the sales floor, immediate action must be taken to ensure it is properly cleaned up. To start with, place a wet floor cone directly next to the spill, then immediately proceed to retrieve cleaning supplies. Using a mop or other means, thoroughly remove the liquid from the floor. Once the spill has been cleaned, be sure to place a sufficient number of wet floor cones around the perimeter of the spill area and leave until the floor has had time to completely dry. Employee stocking shelves on the sales floor should always keep empty boxes and other trash off the floor. Empty or partially empty pallets should never be left on the sales floor or sidewalk. These should be immediately removed and placed in the designated location. As mentioned in the first of this section, it is every employee's responsibility to continually be on the lookout for slip and trip hazards and to take immediate action if any are observed or reported. When working in the deli or grill area, additional precautions must be taken to help ensure your safety. Unnecessary clutter, including empty boxes, water hoses, trash, and other non-essential items should be kept off the floor. Clutter is one of the leading causes of trip and fall accidents. Food scraps and liquids such as water, oil, or meat juices should also be kept off the floor. The clean-as-you-go approach should be utilized instead of waiting until the end of the day to conduct one massive cleanup. Overhead storage areas and racks for pots and pans should be kept neat and orderly to prevent objects from falling. If you are working around hot surfaces and equipment such as ovens, stovetops, or fryers, special precautions must be taken to prevent burns. Oven mitts and heat-resistant rubber gloves are available to use when removing hot pans and racks from ovens, stovetops, and fryers. Be sure to utilize these items. Never use towels or other products not designed for handling hot items. There are several models and types of fryers in operation. Regardless of the type of fryer, heat-resistant rubber gloves, eye protection, and a rubber apron must be worn when filtering grease, changing grease, or cleaning the inside of a fryer. Not understanding how to correctly and safely perform a task or not understanding how to use a particular piece of equipment can lead to injury. If you do not feel comfortable with safely performing a job, it is your responsibility to let your supervisor know that you need assistance or additional training. 
All stores are equipped with fire extinguishers. In the event of a fire, only those individuals trained and authorized to use fire extinguishers should attempt to extinguish small fires. Additionally, stores with delis are equipped with exhaust hoods that are located above fryers and other cooking appliances. Exhaust hoods contain fire suppression systems that will automatically activate and discharge if a fire starts under the hood. The system is also connected to a manual activation station and can be activated by pulling the pin on the front of the station. Coolers and freezers are used to store drinks and perishable food products. Good housekeeping procedures must be followed in freezers and coolers. Products should be kept neat, orderly, and easily accessible. When stacking products on storage racks, heavier items should be stacked on the lower levels and lighter items stacked overhead. Be careful not to stack product higher than necessary. Floors should remain clean and free of debris. When stocking, be sure to clean up empty boxes and trash as you go. These items left on the floor can increase the risk for a trip and fall accident. Because of the difficulty of keeping floors clean and dry at all times, it is mandatory that employees working in the deli wear slip-resistant shoes purchased from Shoes for Crews. For those that cannot find a pair of shoes from Shoes for Crews that fits comfortably or those who have special needs for shoes, Shoes for Crews offers a slip-resistant overshoe that can be worn over most any type of shoe. Wearing the overshoes meets the slip-resistant shoe requirement. Because of the tread design of slip-resistant shoes, food particles and other matter tends to collect between the tread and reduces the effectiveness of the shoes. Those working in food prep areas will need to clean the soles daily to prevent buildup. Wearing slip-resistant shoes is not a substitute for maintaining clean and dry floors. Equipment such as stoves, fryers, and other appliances should remain in good working order. Store personnel should not attempt to service or make repairs on equipment. Only qualified maintenance personnel are authorized for such repairs. Inform your manager should you observe any problems with equipment. In any retail environment where money is exchanged, the potential for robbery exists. Being prepared ahead of time can help you and other employees remain safe should a robbery take place. If you discover someone is about to rob the store or is already in the process of robbing the store, follow these precautions and guidelines. First of all, try to remain calm. Do not question the presence of a weapon. Cooperate with the robber and be polite and as accommodating as possible. Do what you are told. Try not to make the robber angry. Do not stare or maintain constant eye contact with the robber. Do everything possible to keep the robbery as short as possible. Do not try to physically stop the robber or be a hero and do not use weapons. Push the panic button when it is safe to do so. If you do not know the location of the panic button, be sure and ask at the conclusion of this video. During the robbery, be as observant as possible. Pay attention to the robber's appearance such as age, race, sex, build, scars, and mannerisms. As the robber leaves the store, use the exit door measuring gauge to estimate the height of the robber. Get a description of the robber's vehicle, if you can do so, without leaving the store. Once the robber has left the store, immediately lock the door and call 911. Next, call the Asset Protection Department and your district director. Ask any witnesses to wait for the police. Protect the scene of the crime. Do not touch any notes, money, documents, countertops, or other surfaces the robber may have touched. Do not conduct any business. Admit only law enforcement personnel, medical personnel, and company management to the store. Do not discuss any details of the robbery or divulge the amount of the loss to anyone except authorized management of Brookshire Brothers or law enforcement directly involved in the case. Occasionally, customers will spill fuel during the fueling process. Most of these spills are small and can be easily cleaned up with absorbent. When a small spill is reported or observed, get absorbent and spread over the spill. Let the absorbent remain long enough to absorb the fuel, then sweep it up and dispose in the dumpster. Do not leave absorbent unattended on the pavement. For spills too large to clean up with absorbent, a different set of procedures will need to be followed. 
Regardless of the circumstances, do whatever necessary to keep people safe when a large spill occurs. All employees should stay upwind from the spill to avoid inhalation of gases or vapors and avoid direct contact with the spilled fuel. First, initiate efforts to stop the discharge or spill using the emergency stop button. Immediately call your district director and 911 if conditions warrant. Use barricaded tape or cones to keep customers out of the spill area. If it is safe to do so, use absorbents to prevent the spill from reaching a ditch or storm drain. Once emergency responders have arrived at the store, they will be responsible for taking charge of the area and making decisions to ensure the safety of both employees and customers. Brookshire Brothers strives to maintain a safe and healthy workplace free from recognized hazards that can lead to injury. However, if you do become injured while on the job, it is your responsibility to report the injury to the store manager or manager in charge within 24 hours, no matter how minor the injury. This video is not intended to cover all aspects of Brookshire Brothers Safety Program. Additional information is provided in the employee owner orientation and information guide that was given to each employee at the time of hire. Also, the entire safety program titled Brookshire Brothers Convenience Store Safety Plan is available to all employees. You may request a copy of the plan from your store manager or by contacting the Risk Management Department at the corporate office. In a convenience store, many jobs occur simultaneously throughout the day. A safe work environment can only be achieved when everyone is working together and looking out for the safety of themselves and those working around them. This concludes our video. Remember, safety is up to you.